Clover. Thanks for joining me this Thursday on 7 Edition. I'm Ruth Ho and these are tonight's top stories. Sultan of Pahang sworn in as the 16th Yang Di Pertuan Agong. Stamp duty exemptions for properties priced between 300,000 ringgit to 1 million ringgit. Extreme temperatures leave dozens dead in the U.S. The Sultan of Pahang Al Sultan Abdul uh, my apologies Al Sultan Abdullah Riayatuddin Al Mustafa Bila Shah was sworn in today as the 16th Yang Dipertuan Agong in a ceremony steeped in tradition at the Istana Negara in Kuala Lumpur. The Sultan of Perak Sultan Nazrin Shah also took the oath of office as the deputy Yang Dipertuan Agong at the same ceremony. Their Majesties were elected to office by the Malay rulers at the 20, 251st Special Meeting of Conference the Rulers on January 24th to reign for a five-year term from today. Al Sultan Abdullah, aged 59, and Sultan Nazrin, 62, took their oath and signed the instruments of office before the other Malay rulers except Kelantan, who was represented by the Tengku Makota Kelantan, Tengku Dr. Muhammad Faiz Petra, Sultan Ismail Petra. The ceremony, which started at 10:55 a.m. at the Balarong Seri, was held during the 252nd special meeting of the Conference of Rulers chaired by the Sultan of Selangor, Sultan Sharifuddin Idris Shah. Upon taking his oath and signing the proclamation of assuming office, Al Sultan Abdullah now succeeds Sultan Muhammad V as the 16th Yang Dipertuan Agong. Yang Dipertuan Agong bagi Malaysia bersumpah dengan melafazkan Wallahi, Wabillahi, Watullahi. Maka dengan lafaz ini berikralah kami dengan sesungguhnya dan dengan sebenarnya mengaku akan taat setia pada menjalankan dengan adilnya pemerintahan bagi Malaysia dengan mengikut sebagaimana undang-undang dan perlembagaan yang telah disah dan dimasyurkan dan yang akan disah dan yang akan dimasyurkan di masa hadapan ini. The proclamation of assuming office was also signed by Sultan of Trunganu, Sultan Mizan Zana Abidin, and the Raja of Perlis, Tuanku Syed Sirajuddin Putra Jamalulail, as the witnesses. Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad later read out the instrument of proclamation, officially signifying Sultan Abdullah's ascension to the throne as the new head of state of Malaysia in accordance with the laws and the federal constitution. The Mufti of Sabah, Datuk Bongsu Elias Aziz Jaffa, recited the prayers, seeking the blessings of the Almighty for the well-being of their majesties, the people and the nation. Others that came included Yang Dipertua Negeri Melaka, Tun Dr. Muhammad Kale Yaakob, Yang Dipertua Negeri Pulau Pinang, Tun Abdul Rahman Abbas, Yang Dipertua Negeri Sarawak, Tun Abdul Taib Mahmud and Yang Dipertua Negeri Sabah, Tun Juha Mahiruddin. Malaysia is one of the 43 nations which practice the system of constitutional monarchy. But the rotational system of electing a king from among nine Malay rulers is the only one of its kind in the world. Earlier, Al Sultan Abdullah Ri Ayatuddin Al Mustafa Bila Shah flew into the Kuala Lumpur International Airport KLIA with his consort Raja Primaisuri Agong, Tunku Aziza Amina Maimuna Iskandar Al Murhum Sultan Iskandar, in a special aircraft from the Royal Malaysian Air Force Base in Kuantan. Their Majesties arrived at KLIA's Bungaraya complex at about 9 10 a.m., welcomed by Raja Muda of Slango, Tunku Amir Shah. Sultan Sharifuddin Idris Shah and Tengku Laksamana Slango, Tengku Sulaiman Shah, Almarhum Sultan Salahuddin. Also present were government official ceremony chairman Datuk Sri Muhammad Zuki Ali, who is also Senior Deputy Secretary General and Deputy Secretary General of Management at the Prime Minister's Office, Datuk Junaida Kamaruddin and senior government officials. There, they were accorded state welcome to the strains of the Nafiri trumpets played by a 14-member cavalry ceremonious of the Malaysian Army. 
His Majesty and Raja Permaisuri Agong Tunku Aziza Maimuna Iskandar Almarhum Sultan Iskandar were welcomed by Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad and Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Wan Aziza Wan Ismail. Al Sultan Abdullah, accompanied by Tun Dr. Mahathir, then walked to the royal platform past the land's barriers to acknowledge the salute of the main guard of honour. The central band of the Royal Malay Regiment led by Major Mohammad Nur Azizan Yahya played the national anthem Negaraku. The royal standard of the Yani Pertuan Agong was hoisted and a 21-gun salute was fired. His Majesty then inspected the main guard of honour mounted by four officers and 103 men from the 1st Battalion Royal Malay Regiment led by Major Mohammad Isham Ahmad Rashidi. His Majesty then left Parliament Square and proceeded to Istana Negara in Jalan Tuanku Abdul Halim, Bukit Damansara to take the oath of office and sign the instrument of office as Yang Dipertuan Agong. Now, police nabbed a 32-year-old suspected car thief after a high-speed chase that ended with a vehicle he was driving in Turning Turtle. The suspect, who had fled in a stolen car in Kajang early today, also crashed into a police patrol motorcycle in his bid to escape. In the 7.15 a.m. incident, a police team ordered the driver of the vehicle, a Proton Perdana V6, to stop after they suspected that the car was stolen. Police then gave chase, causing the suspect to collide with the police patrol motorcycle, injuring the policeman on the machine. The car also hit several police vehicles and a shop at Taman Bukit Angsana before it skidded and overturned. Kajang District Police Chief ACP Ahmad Zafi Muhammad Yusuf said the police team had to open fire at the suspect in self-defence. According to police records, the suspect has six previous criminal records. He said police were investigating the suspect's connection to vehicle theft and house break-ins. The case will also be probed under attempted murder for ramming and to the police personnel. In Kelantan, a senior citizen was arrested with more than 30,000 ringgit worth of fireworks and firecrackers at a house in Rantau Panjang last Saturday. The 70-year-old man who was picked up by a 15-member team from the General Operation Forest Border Intelligence Unit which raided his house in Kampung Kedai Lama following tip-off from the public. Checks showed the various brands and Types of firecrackers and fireworks were packed in 44 boxes and five gunny sacks. Police believe that the contraband was smuggled into the state from a neighbouring country to be sold at a local market for the Chinese New Year celebration. The suspect had previous records of committing the same offence. The case is being investigated under the Explosive Act, which carries the maximum jail term of seven years or 10,000 ringgit fine or both upon conviction. A high-powered motorcycle rider was burnt to death after the victim's motorcycle was trapped under a bus and caught fire. Serike Fire and Rescue Department Chief Sunakaha said the incident occurred after the victim's motorcycle collided with a bus at Kilometer 9 Jalan Serike Sibu at 2.30pm today. The victim was said to be heading to Serike from Sibu. The deceased identity has yet to be ascertained and the body was handed over to the police for further action. Meanwhile, the bus, the bus driver, a ticket issuer, a conductor and four passengers escaped unheard. Moving on, the Finance Ministry has announced further exemption or reduction for res residential properties above 300,000 ringgit up to 2.5 million under the six months home ownership campaign. The stamp duty rate on memorandum of transfer MOT for residential properties worth 1 million ringgit to 2.5 million ringgit has been reduced from 4% to 3%, while stamp duty on loan arrangement is exempted for properties worth 300,000 ringgit to 2.5 million ringgit. So what we are making it more uh conducive is to exempt that payment of uh, stamp duty 0.5%.
So that would also make it more attractive for these uh, purchasers lending money that they don't have to come up with so much money up front. He announced this at the kickstart of the Home Ownership Camp Campaign 2019 with Maypax earlier today. He added that this is part of the government's effort to encourage home ownership among the Rockyard. Unsold properties increased 48% to 30,115 units as as the third quarter of 2018 versus the same period in 2017. Meanwhile, Malaysian home buyers will enjoy stamp duty exemption for residential units priced between 300,000 ringgit and 1 million ringgit. The Malaysian Property Expo Mapex, along with government's home ownership campaign HOC 2019, will see discounts for residential units from 10% onwards. The three-day expo beginning March 1st is expected to see 180 booths showcasing properties worth 5 billion ringgit with attractive discounts or packages. He said that it must, be, uh, must go down by at least 10%. If you can go down more, better. But then I think the developers will know they don't go down enough, uh, then people will buy other properties that, has, that, will, that give more discounts. So that one, we let the market forces decide. We are collecting the numbers, uh, but based on our rough estimate, uh, we probably have uh, about maybe five, up to 5 billion uh, worth of properties that will be exhibited uh, during that period. Other than private developers, several government and government-linked agencies will also be taking part in HOC 2019, namely the Housing and Local Government Ministry, Uda Holdings Berhad, Perbadanan Prima Malaysia, Sharikat Perumahan Negara Berhad and Permodalan National Berhad. The HOC was announced during the tabling of the 2019 budget in November last year, while Mapex is an annual property expo for the past two decades. The Ministry of Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs today released the 2019 Chinese New Year price control scheme nationwide with 13 goods identified on the list. As Deputy Minister Chong Chen Jen said, of the 13 controlled food items listed, 12 goods are for consumer level, level which one is live pigs for farm level. He reiterated that the maximum price determination for controlled food items on the list are based on fairness and effective price enforcement, as well as on price monitoring carried out at all districts nationwide throughout 2018 until January 2019. Chiang Jen also warned traders not to raise prices of the controlled items between January 30th and February 8th. Okay, we have, uh, have 1,400. Checker, okay, appointed by the commentary. Nationwide, or just huh? nationwide. Nationwide. Yeah. So uh, they are they are going around every day to check prices of goods. He said, notice under Section 21 of the Price Control and Anti-Profiteering Act 2011 would be issued on traders who fail to comply with the scheme's instructions. Upon conviction, a fine of up to 10,000 ringgit or imprisonment not exceeding three months or both, or a compound of up to 50,000 ringgit would be imposed on errant individuals or traders. As for errant companies, a fine of up to 500,000 ringgit or compound of up to 250,000 ringgit would be imposed. For offence of displaying pink price tags, a fine of up to 10,000 ringgit or a compound of 5,000 ringgit will be imposed on individuals. As for companies, a fine of up to 20,000 ringgit or a compound of up to 10,000 ringgit would be imposed. Works Minister Barobian said 25 highway operators will offer special incentives to motorists in the form of discounts. Highway concessionaires will offer discounts of between 10% and 30% to car users on tolled highways on Chinese New Year. Plus, Malaysia Berhad will offer a 10% discount for cars using the electronic toll charge ETC for six of its highways. Ani Berhad, which operates Phase 1 of the Kuala Lumpur to Karak Highway and East Coast Highway, will also offer a 10% discount for cars. The discounts will be effective from 12.01 a.m. on February 5th to 11.59 p.m. the same day.
welcome back. Malaysia was ranked top five globally and highest in Southeast Asia for mobile social media penetration. According to Hotsuit and We Are Social's latest digital 2019 report, internet pen penetration in Malaysia stood at 80%, with users spending a daily average of 8% and five minutes online. In a joint statement today, they said, emerging fourth globally, Malaysia is in the lead among Southeast Asian countries, including Singapore in sixth place, followed by Thailand and Philippines. According to, the, to them, Malaysia pre presented a unique opportunity for businesses, which 75% of internet users spent their money via e-commerce, with 58% spending on mobile commerce platforms. The country, as highlighted by a report, edged out Singapore in the adoption of mobile banking, with 66% of the internet users in Malaysia utilised mobile banking options as compared to Singapore at 64%. Asia has filed another suit claiming nearly 480 million ringgit for losses incurred from operating at KLIA2 from Malaysia Airport's holding Berhad MAHB. Air Asia said in a statement today that a notice was served on MAHB's wholly owned subsidiary, Malaysian Airport Sabang Syndrome Berhad MASSB, today. Air Asia listed its losses totaling 479.78 million ringgit, mainly due to loss of customers in the last four years, owing to disruptions and poor condition of the terminal. These include cancellations and loss of revenue from multiple runway closures, apron defects damage to two aircrafts due to malfunctions in MESSB's infrastructure and sensors, a fuel line rupture, internet outrages, my apologies, outages, and loss of customers. AirAsia and AirAsia X are jointly seeking mediation in accordance with the Malaysia Aviation Commission, MAFCOM, which requires the dispute to first be resolved in good faith through mediation. Under the Act, if mediation fails, MAFCOM will attribute the dispute. Both AirAsia and AirAsia X are hoping to settle the issue amicably. If you've been on Google today, chances are you might have seen this creative doodle taking over its iconic logo and you probably were wondering why. Well, it's because today, Google celebrates our favourite comfort food, the Nasi Lama. Debuting, debuting at midnight last night, the doodle is accompanied by a 40-second animated video clip entitled Celebrating Nasi Lama. The clip features all the elements needed to make this famous dish as well as the different side dishes that we Malaysians customise to our liking. Tweets were pouring in as Malaysians commend, commend Google for acknowledging this scrumptious delight, while others wittily expressed their hunger for those dish after seeing the doodle. All this nasi lemak talk is making me hungry, boy. Probably I'll munch on a hot one later. Now updated as of 7 p.m., here are the top trending topics and searches on the internet today. Coming up next, over a dozen injured in violent Gaza Strip clashes. Stay with us.